Hey Gophers! Today's episode will be slightly different. We are not going to focus on a specific topic but instead going to discuss a broader topic – concurrency in Go web applications. Let's begin. Go is known for its powerful yet simple concurrency model. Its concurrency is built around goroutines and channels. Unlike traditional thread-based systems, Go makes it easy to run thousands, even millions, of concurrent tasks with minimal overhead. In modern web applications, handling high traffic, long-running operations and real-time responsiveness is a must. Whether you're serving API requests, processing background jobs, or streaming data, efficient concurrency is key to performance and scalability. In this episode, we'll explore how concurrency works in Go web frameworks like Net, Slash HTTP, and Jin. We will also explore if patterns like worker pools and pipelines are useful in real scenarios. It is critical to understand how to offload heavy tasks to background systems and how to apply concurrency patterns to background processing. Let's dive in. Most developers use net slash HTTP or other frameworks to build web applications. How does concurrency play a part there? Do we need to explicitly take care of simultaneous requests? Go's net HTTP package automatically starts a new Go routine for each incoming HTTP request, allowing multiple requests to be handled concurrently. This means your server can respond to many clients simultaneously without blocking, even if some requests take longer than others. For example, if 100 users hit your endpoint at once, Go will spawn 100 Go routines, one per request, enabling smooth parallel request handling out of the box. Don't believe me blindly, we will quickly look into the source code of NetHttp package, which is part of the Golang source. In NetHttp server, the function listen and serve starts the server with a given address and handler. Here is the implementation of this function. In the end, it calls the server.serve method. Let's jump to its implementation. In this method, for each API request, a new Go routine is created. Now, let's see how GIN handles each request. Jin is built on top of NetHttp, so it inherits this concurrency model. Each request handled by Jin also runs in its own Go routine, making it naturally concurrent. Now let's look at the Jin source code. Let's get into Jin.go. We use the run function to start the server. This function internally runs NetHttp's listen and serve function. There are certain things you should avoid when dealing with goroutines in handlers. While goroutines are lightweight, it's not recommended to start additional goroutines inside your handlers for long-running tasks like sending emails or processing data. Doing so can lead to resource leaks, unmonitored failures and difficulties in scaling. Instead, these tasks should be offloaded to a background system where they can be retried, monitored, and scaled independently of the web server. This ensures your application remains responsive and maintainable under load. Another important question, are concurrency patterns like pipelines and worker pools useful? Those concurrency patterns like pipelines and worker pools are powerful tools, but do you always need to build them yourself? Not necessarily. If you're using background processing systems like Factory, Async or RabbitMQ, a lot of the heavy lifting is already done for you. These tools provide built-in job queues, retries, scheduling and even worker management. In many web applications, especially early on, these systems are more than enough to handle background tasks without needing custom concurrency logic. These patterns shine in background systems where you often need to balance throughput, resource usage and maintainability. Even when using a task queue like async, your workers can use these patterns internally to handle tasks more efficiently. In short, you don't always need to build these patterns yourself, but when you do, Go makes it fast and fun. The key is knowing when to rely on Go's built-in features and when to extend them.
Remember, every HTTP request in Go is already concurrent, so you're already tapping into the power of Go routines. Use it wisely, and your apps will scale with confidence and clarity. I hope you found it useful. See you in the next episode.